Welcome to FluxDrive's FSC coupling installation video. This video will demonstrate the installation of an FSC3 coupling in a 5 inch spacer shaft envelope. The FluxDrive FSC has three major components the FSC coupling body, the hubs and shaft spacer, and the air gap spacer shims. Shaft preparation. Prior to installing the FSC, it's important to make sure both motor and load shafts are in good condition. Use a fine file to smooth out any dings or dents in the shaft. Use fine emery cloth or sandpaper to remove any paint or rust from both shafts. It is important that the shafts are clean and free of any defects. Test fit the motor and load keys. Ensure that both keys sit fully in the keyway. Smooth out any set screw marks or defects in the keys that may prevent the hubs from sliding onto the shafts fully. Use a dial indicator to measure the shaft runout. Total indicated runout should not exceed 5,000 for 1,800 RPM applications and 3,000 for 3,600 RPM applications. To realize the maintenance savings potential of the FSC, it's important to install on solid equipment. Starting with new bearings on the motor and new bearings and seals on the load will give you a good baseline for calculating maintenance savings. Measure the distance between shaft ends. To install the coupling without moving the motor, 4.5 to 5 inches is required when using a 1 inch hub spacer. Installing the hubs. Use an Allen wrench to loosen all six clamp bolts. Also loosen the four Allen set screws located at the top and bottom of each hub. Insert the motor key and slide the motor hub onto the motor shaft. If the hub does not slide freely, remove the hub and reinspect the shaft and key for defects. Any defects on the shaft or key may prevent the hub from sliding on freely. Perform the same procedure for the load hub. Loosen all six clamp bolts and the four set screws on either side of the hub. Install the load hub onto the load shaft. Again, ensure that the hub slides freely onto the load shaft. Remove any burrs or defects that may prevent it from sliding freely. Inspect both hubs for machining dowel pins. These pins may have inadvertently been left in after the boring process. The pins have to be removed in order to allow the hub to clamp onto the shafts properly. Place the dial indicator on the hub pilot and verify that the total indicated runout is less than 5,000 for 1,800 RPM applications and 3,000 for 3,600 RPM applications. Install the hub shaft spacer onto the magnet rotor. This 1 inch spacer is approved for use on shafts with a 4.5 to 5 inch DBSE. Torque all fasteners to the specified torque listed in the instruction guide supplied with the FSC coupling. The FSC will typically install with the magnet rotor attached to the load hub and the induction rotor attached to the motor. Insert the eight Allen screws into the hub and tighten to the specified torque outlined in the installation guide supplied with the FSC coupling. Slide the FSC and load hub towards the motor until there is about one inch of clearance between the motor shaft face and the induction rotor face. Insert the four supplied jacking bolts into the threaded holes on the induction rotor face. Screw them in until they just come into contact with the magnet rotor. Follow the same procedure on the other side. 
Verify that the magnet rotor is centered in the induction rotor housing. By comparing the space between the outer edge of the magnet rotor and the inside edge of the induction rotor. With a soft face dead blow hammer, tap down on the induction rotor to center it over the magnet rotor. Screw in the four jack screws on the motor side until they come in contact with the magnet rotor. Then unscrew each jack bolt two complete turns counterclockwise. Tighten the jack bolts on the load side in one quarter turn increments until the magnet rotor is centered in the induction rotor. Fine adjustment can be made to the jack bolts on both sides to get an even air gap between the magnet rotor and the induction rotor. Rotate the coupling and verify that the air gap is equal on both sides of the magnet rotor. Slide the motor hub up until it comes in contact with the induction rotor. It may be required to move the motor slightly to get the hub to engage the pilot. Insert the eight socket head cap screws into the hub and tighten to the specified torque outlined in the instruction guide supplied with the FSC coupling. Tighten the motor bolts if they were loosened. Tighten the six clamp bolts on the load side hub in an alternating pattern. Torque the bolts to the specified torque outlined in the instruction guide supplied with the FSC coupling. Tighten the two set screws over the keyway last. Repeat this procedure for the motor side hub also. Verify that all of the hub fasteners and set screws are tight for both motor and load side hubs. Also verify that the motor bolts are tight. Remove the eight jacking bolts from the motor and load side induction rotors. Retain the jacking bolts in the event the coupling has to be removed in the future or the air gap spacer shims have to be inserted at a later time. As a final inspection, verify that the magnet rotor is centered in the induction rotor housing and that the air gap is even on both sides. However, this coupling can perform with misalignment without producing vibration. As long as the magnet rotor does not come in contact with the induction rotor, there is no significant increase in vibration levels on either the motor or the load side. Verify that the six induction rotor spacer bolts are tight. The nut has a smooth face and the bolt has a serrated face. When tightening or loosening this fastener, hold the bolt firm and keep it from rotating and apply torque to the nut. This will allow the bolt head to bite into the aluminum surface, locking it in place. Torque the nut to the specified torque outlined in the instruction guide supplied with the FSC coupling. This completes the install procedure for the FSC.